Welcome back. Now, in September last year, Today FM presenter Ed Smith was working at Electric Picnic when he suffered from a heart attack, rushing him to St. James's Hospital. Taking to Twitter to share his story, he took the chance to also warn his followers about the importance of regular checkups. Well, thankfully, Ed is feeling great now and he joins us this morning in the hope of spreading his story even further. Ed, you're very welcome. The things you have to do to get on this... You had, to, you had to go on and get on well. Oh, I've, I've been dying attack. to get on for ages, and I almost did. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen, take Thanks us to back to, uh, not, ex not to the events so much of Electric Picnic, but before that, I mean, were you feeling unwell? Were no, there any signs I, of anything? You no, know, I, I, very busy life. I was on air six nights a week mm. at that stage for maybe a couple of years. Working at night, too. Working at night times, and then had the one day off, the day and a half off. I just felt it was just, it was normal. My normal then... You don't think about it. So, no. like, I'm looking back now retrospectively, having had the stents in, and I feel so much better. I'm like, oh God, that's how I should have been feeling. And yes. I wasn't. I was tired maybe more than I should. I would do the old dad thing where I'd sit in the sofa and. The noddies. Do you know, to yeah. get the nods on? And any bit of warmth or heat, I'd sweat a lot. Or I just thought because I was overweight. But really, I wasn't. My heart obviously wasn't working at full pelt as, as it should have been. Mm. But I think. Um, being at the picnic then that day, I was working quite hard. I was DJing that day. Then there's a few cans backstage, you know, that kind of thing. And then you go back to the residence bar and a few of my colleagues were just enjoying themselves. And then I went to bed and I woke up and it wasn't, it wasn't cinematic. It wasn't like, you know, yeah. the guy from Four Weddings and a Funeral where he spins around yes. and he grabs <laughs> the tablecloth. Yeah, it wasn't that. It was kind of like... Ooh. And honestly, I, I, like, I felt like I wanted to burp or fart it out. I'll be honest, that's just okay. the truth of it. It felt like, you know, ugh. and uh, I went downstairs and I left the room of the hotel and I walked the grounds. It was just turning dawn. It was actually a beautiful morning. So I started walking the grounds, no socks on, just a pair of shoes and a pair of, I had trousers on, don't worry. <laughs> and, uh, and I felt this, this isn't right. And I had the presence of mind, thank God, first of all, not to go back to sleep. Yeah go back to bed and try and sleep it off. But I went to the receptionist and I said, uh, sorry, and he goes, yeah, I think I'm having a heart attack. Oh, and he started laughing, because I think he'd seen me in the residence bar having a bit of crack. Yeah. And he goes, go on out of that. I was like, I get why you're laughing, but actually, would you mind, and I was very calm, would you mind calling an ambulance? And his face dropped. I was like, don't worry, it's fine, I'm okay. So the ambulance arrived and I was whisked up to James's. And, and they had, were so good. You had had a heart attack. I was having one then. And did they confirm that once you got into well, the ambulance? Well, the thing is, they're so good. The I, to, I didn't get their names, but the paramedics and the level of kindness and expertise I've received from the HSE, it gets an awful time. I know it yeah. does. You see the tweets, you see the headlines. But for the majority of people that work so hard, they saved my life. And the paramedics to the doctors, to the surgeons, whatever. But I knew when I got into the ambulance, I'm very good at reading people's vibes and minds, but... I knew it was serious then. I could read into their body language. And I was like, when they put the siren on coming into the city, yeah. I was like, oh. Okay, yeah. there's something. So I was like, I was joking around. I was like, no, don't worry about it, it's fine. My boss, <clears throat> Adele, was with me. She came with me, phenomenal. And she was holding my hand and everything. I said, don't worry about it. I wanted everyone to calm down. Yeah. I'm fine. Everyone just relax. It's, it's all good. Siren goes on, I go, Okay. Just lie back and be Something sick. serious yeah. is yeah. happening. Now, just to go be. back in terms of your family medical history, yes. both your parents, both parents sadly passed away, passed away suddenly. from heart attack. Yes. So my father was 61, my mother was 65 or six years later. And so it, that in an, awful, in an awful way helped because I knew in the back of my mind I was prone. It was going to come for me, and especially the way I was living my life, not in a very smart way, not in a hard smart way, that it was going to come for me at some stage. So when it did start happening, I wasn't like, okay, this is the heart now. So it, it, it able, enabled me to remain calm and re remain clear and then get it sorted as soon as I could. So it's like the TV inspector coming, the doorbell goes. Yeah. You go, oh, it's, it's him, I know who it is. So it resulted in you having a couple of stents put in. Two stents put in that morning. <clears throat> so it was all done very quickly, very calmly, very efficiently. And I was brought up to the ICU and I was brought down and then to general ward. And I was out by Wednesday. And even That's that incredible. day I felt miles better. Wow. Yeah, and it was the day of the North London Derby. And I think a lot of this is down to being a Spurs fan. <laughs> there's so many, there's only so yeah. many years it's this heart can take. They literally yeah, yeah. broke my heart. They broke your heart, yeah. literally. Yeah. So, 
uh, but it was the North Ireland and the All Ireland was on that day, so I was trying to. So I was in fine form. Yeah. But I think my, my the very Irish, Irish reaction I had. First of all, it was the Irishness in me. I think really, the, the way we deal with our medical issues that got me in trouble in the first place. So that's why I want to. So are you use were sweeping them under the, the carpet a little bit. Oh, it'd be grand. And the thing is, we're afraid to go in to the GP or to the hospital because then then we'll know yeah. the bad news. And Facing I'd reality. rather not. I should be grand, be grand. And you had Michael on earlier. If your car had a little bit of a rattle, you bring it to the you're straight into the garage. Yeah. You'll spend 700 euro fixing the gearbox and whatever. And I'll say to you, you get 60 now to the GP. Just get your cholesterol checked, get your blood pressures, get some bloods. Oh, no, I, should, I, just, I don't have time. I couldn't be. And up. that's what you're calling for people to do. At least, mm. you know, you're, make, you're making it aware to people, particularly if you've got a, a family history. Specifically if you have a family history, because some of the stats are frightening. One in four now, the campaign that we've today, today FM have teamed up with the Irish Heart Foundation with yes. GoRed.ie. So this is for the month of February. The Irish Heart Foundation are specifically targeting women because it's one in four women in Ireland will die of cardiovascular, more than that die of cancer. And the, the most shocking and at the same time hopeful uh, fact is that 80% of all cardiovascular disease is preventable. So that you don't have to die from So it's about death. anticipation. And I know both my parents would still be here with me if we'd gotten ahead of time, brought them in, had them looked at, and they would have gone, actually, you need a stent or whatever. They'd still be here. So whoever's watching today, have a think, have a discuss with your aunts, your, your mom, what is your family history? Look at yourself, really. Like I was carrying, I've been carrying weight since I was 14. Mm. Now I'm going to fix that now. But thankfully, I'm living proof. Literally, thankfully, I'm living proof. I got a chance. My body had packed its bags, and the cases were the in the door, corridor, yeah, you're ready to and go. the door pulled up. And my relationship with my body was, I was in an abusive one, really, because I'd go out for, I'd binge drink on a Friday. I'd have maybe 50, I'd, I'd borrow cigarettes. And the next day, then, breakfast roll. I'd sit in my arse for the day, and then watch football. Take away. And then maybe get a takeaway. So it's the knock-on effect. It's not just the drink and the... No, it's not. So it's your the knock-on effect, isn't it? It was the lifestyle. And then sedentary, because you're in work. You're sitting down. I'm on air. You're sitting down. Yeah. So you've got to just... And I needed that kick in the bum to really listen. But what I'm trying to get people to focus on is go to goread.ie. There's going to be the month of February, but it's going to culminate on February the 14th, where you can do an event in your office. You can just, like, mm. wear red like this. Very Do good. a five-a-side <clears throat> coffee morning, whatever you want. This is to really emphasise and get the message home to women. Like, my mother passed away. And young, sprightly, 65. Mm -hmm. She was young as well. She looked 10 years younger, gone. And she'd still be here today if we had listened or she had listened or maybe got herself looked at. And I think that if you go to the Irish Heart Foundation website, all the information you need is there. Great. They're so great. Yeah. So it's just a reminder, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Regardless of your family history. It's a yellow card. Check in. It's a yellow card, is exactly. And I think as well that, you know, what I always say is, if you go and there's nothing wrong, it's not a relief to know. If you go and they spot something, they've got it early as they yeah. can, and they'll fix it. I'm flying it now. And you're back on the airwaves. I'm back on the airwaves, so I'm on, back on Today FM yet. Uh, Sunday to Thursday, I wear two little hats. One is Ed's Songs of Praise on a Sunday, 7 to 10, and then it's Ed's National Anthem. It's kind of a slightly different 21 flavor. years, you're up I'm there 21 it's years, fun, yeah. yeah. And you mentioned as well in the notes I read that they were hugely supportive. Yeah. They've been uh, incredible. The Today thing, FM, is, is so it's, it's, it's a family. It's sure it's the same here. That. Exactly. Yeah. And I rang my boss after two weeks. I was at home. There's only so much Judge Judy and the chase. I'd finished the chase. Yeah, the chase, yeah. I clocked I'm it. Done with it. I'd, like, I'd, I'd, I'd done all the levels. <laughs> I'm done with yeah, it. Yeah. I've, 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 I've done all the levels of the chase. So I rang my boss and went, listen, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. I'm back. Come on. Like, I'm, I'm fine. She was audibly angry at me, saying, would you sit down and relax? For, take this time. If I see you dark at the door of Today FM, yeah. I'll fire you. <laughs> I'll kick you out. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you another heart attack. So... She was so good and supportive. They've been incredible. And it's so great to team up now with the Irish Heart Foundation because on the day it happened, I sent that tweet. It was an hour after the heart attack. I was determined to turn it, make this a positive. And it and is the most positive thing that's happened. It is, and you well, look listen, fantastic. Yeah. You look great. Right. Well, thanks for coming you. and sharing the story. Very kind. Absolutely. Continued, Continued good, good health. health. Uh, thanks for the whiskey. This is yeah, well, yes. <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> it's not whiskey, by the way. <laughs> not. After the break, more wedding styles. If you're tying the knot this year, we're over on the catwalk next.